So the closing of businesses across the country deemed non-essential is taking a financial toll. But there are those who believe Americans should not think about returning to work anytime soon. Okay, let's unpack that with tonight's political panel, Fox News contributors, Leslie Marshall and Jason Chaffetz. Also former Deputy Assistant Attorney General John Yu. Welcome to all of you. Hey Shannon. Nice to be with you, Thanks, Shannon. Shannon. Okay, so we are now waiting on the Senate to kind of get things done. Uh, there is a question about a provision that would, it turns out, a number of GOP senators argue, actually pay people more to stay unemployed than to try to head back to work um, based on the way the benefits are doled out. Um, Senator Bernie Sanders says this, though, in my view, it would be an outrage to prevent working class Americans to receive the emergency unemployment assistance included in this legislation. Senator Ben Sass, who's one of the Republicans objecting, says, we want to simply fix what's broken here by saying that unemployment insurance benefits should be capped at 100% of the pay you had before you were employed. Uh, Leslie, what's wrong with that uh, plan to fix that? Well, there are a lot of problems with that, Shannon. As you know, there are small business owners or people who are self-employed, file 1099s, who can't get unemployment insurance in, in many states. Uh, here in California, it's very difficult. And in addition, when does the money come? Right now, the money is projected to come in May. I know the president has said he'd like it by April 6th. That's beyond overly ambitious. And when you look historically, this country in 2001, again in 2008, it took months. And we're talking two, three, four months for the people to get the money. So I I think they should be more concerned about the timeline than the dollar amount. Well, and John, let me bring you in here because you're very familiar and have written and talked about all of these different bailout packages and problems that we've had in the past. Um, but what the administration is saying and what Secretary Mnuchin has stood there at the White House podium and said is, we want to get these loans by the end of next week so you can apply same day and get them dispersed the same day. We want these checks out by April 6th. Is that doable? I mean, listen, first of all, these guys in the Senate and women in the Senate have to vote for it. John? You want, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I, first I think the stimulus package is nice in terms of holding people over until the economy can get back on its feet, but it's not going to make a big difference in terms of the economy. What's really important is the other part of the bill, which is a part that makes loans available to businesses, mm -hmm. because what's happening here is not a problem of people not having enough money to spend. It's that there's not enough production going on because of the states shutting down production. And so what tr the president and the bill can usefully do is make loans available to credit worthy businesses of all kinds, no matter what subject, no matter how big or small. And then the other thing they could do, which the president can do himself, is cut away red tape, cut away regulations, create a launch pad for when the lockdowns are lifted, that businesses can really get to get back to work as quickly as possible. Yeah, they're going to try to hammer out this thing and vote and then the House possibly in the day, next day or two to get this done. In the meantime, uh, there are plenty of critics out there of the president. And uh, today, Mark Cuban, who's, listen, he's clashed with him over certain things. Um, but he was kind of baited today a few times on The View about whether he would kind of take a shot at the president for not getting these things right. Here's how Mark Cuban responded. So Jason, listen, even though they have disagreed over many things, um, Cuban's trying to give him a chance to do his thing here. Uh, Mark Cuban is a true maverick, and that's about as close of a compliment as uh, the president's going to get from Mark Cuban, uh, who really is truly one of the brightest minds. And he, he points out some good things, but he's also giving credit to a president, deservedly so, for listening to the experts, taking action before it was politically correct, before it was in the mainstream media, shutting, helping to shut down that border and starting these public-private partnerships and putting people into action that it will pay, pay dividends. And by the way, on that other subject, Shannon, I gotta point out, go watch the floor speech by Senator Tim Scott and he will explain to you why the provision of mm -hmm. capping people's benefits at 100% of the unemployment to their salary may makes total and perfect sense. It is the right thing to do. It'll get the money out there fast, but we don't want people making 200% of what they were making in their job. That provides a bad incentive. 
Yeah, it's just like the whole conversation of how you attack this thing economically and the healthcare side of it, using surgical precision versus dropping a bomb on the entire situation. And I know the Senate is trying to find that balance as we watch them continue to vote on amendments and, and other things as they try to get this thing done. In the meantime, Mark Cuban talks there about the president deferring to experts. One of the ones who is a favorite who has worked across numerous uh, administrations, different parties, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Uh, the media seems to love him uh, and respect him and listen to him. And he says the president's listening to him. Here's what Dr. Fauci said. All right, Leslie, doctor says the president's listening. He's listening, but you, you've seen, I've seen Dr. Fauci cringe and put his head down or even his hand, his hand to his face when the president says something and he'll get to the podium and in a very professional manner, he'll kind of backpedal in a sense from what the president has said. And I would prefer if the president stuck to the economy because he knows economy. He's, he's been a businessman prior to being president in his political career currently. And Dr. Fauci knows medicine. So I would like the medicine and the scientist to be up there talking about coronavirus from a medical perspective perspective and perhaps the president focusing more on the economic perspective. In the meantime, the Wall Street Journal reporting on a number of polls out in the last couple of days. Uh, they say the coronavirus may make Trump, Trump stronger. That's the headline. And then this is the report. This is not what his critics expected. Trump's standing with voters has improved even as the country closed down and the stock market underwent an historic meltdown. Uh, John, we're talking Gallup, CBS. These are reputable polling organizations. And so far, the news has been good for the president. It's because Trump is actually using the powers of the office for the purposes for which they were created. The presidency exists in our Constitution to take charge when there are unforeseen crises and emergencies. You need a branch of the government can act swiftly and decisively, quickly, even if maybe imperfectly at first. And when Trump's doing that, he is fulfilling the constitutional design. And I think people and voters recognize that this is the kind of executive that they want in office, uh, not someone who's deferring all the time to experts, someone who's not looking to Congress to make all the tough choices, but to act quickly and decisively to address a crisis that's happening immediately. Hmm. All right, John, Leslie, and Jason, thank you very much for being with us tonight.